Uh, welcome to the third lecture of this week one uh, we were discussing chapter number 10 of your book uh, chapter, chapter number 10 that is fundamentals of metal casting so in the last lecture we discussed some basic introduction of the casting technology in which we discuss the sand casting particularly and uh, different features of sand casting such as scope drag, risers, pattern, mold cavity, core and other features. So in this lecture as we discussed earlier we are going to have some engineering analysis of the sand casting. And when I say the sand casting because uh, we are we have discussed only sand casting up to now that's why I'm writing it otherwise these steps are also involved in other casting as well with some changes uh, based on the uh, mechanism we are using uh, based on the type of the mold, based on the type of the material and some other factors as well so when it comes to engineering analysis of the casting we have four steps in the casting process it starts with the heating of the material until it melts then that molten material is poured into the cavity, mold cavity and that is allowed to solidify and during solidification it experiences some shrinkage so these are basically the four steps of the casting process so we start with the engineering analysis of the first step that is the heating now for this purpose heating furnaces of various kinds are used in the foundry they are used to heat the metal beyond the melting point so and we, we should make sure that the enough heat is supplied to the molten material such that when we pour that molten material into the mold cavity it shouldn't start to solidify before filling the mold cavity completely so we we, do, we just don't heat up to the melting point instead we heat beyond the melting point such that to make sure that the metal doesn't start to solidify while pouring the material into the mold cavity or before filling the mold cavity completely so the heat energy supplied uh, in the casting process is equals to the first one heat required to raise the temperature from the room temperature to the melting point the first type of heat or the first batch of heat we are providing to the material is required to raise the temperature from room to the melting point the second heat of fusion once it reaches a melting point then there is a change of phase is required so the heat consumed during the change of phase that is heat of fusion then the third one heat required to raise the temperature beyond the melting point after the desired value so we have three kinds of the heat that we are providing in the melting in the casting process so that's why that is equals to as we know the heat supplied is equals to mcp delta t right so we can write it as a uh, rho v c delta t this is one kind of so we are providing heat uh, from room temperature to melting point plus heat of fusion plus heat from melting point to the pouring temperature right so that is why we have sorry so we have Rho V mm -hmm. Rho V of the and the specific heat in the solid state into delta T that is melting point minus room temperature or you can write T naught plus heat of fusion you can write simply and uh, uh, Rho V plus specific heat in the liquid state into the change in temperature that is pouring temperature minus melting point temperature 
and you simply take out the row v as common so we will simply have cs and tm minus t r plus hf plus cn into tp minus tm so this is how we got the expression this one okay so we are supplying three kind of heat the heat required to raise the temperature from room to the melting point then heat of fusion and the heat required to raise the temperature from melting point to the pouring temperature so here we have cs as a specific heat of the uh, in the solid state we have cl specific heat in the liquid state tm is a melting temperature t naught is a starting of the ambient temperature we have the heat of fusion pouring temperature and volume of the metal being heated so let's check out the example what it says one cubic meter what it says is one cubic meter of certain eutectic alloy what is a eutectic alloy we will discuss when we will discussing the solidification so one cubic meter of a certain eutectic alloy is heated in a crucible which is a kind of furnace it's a kind of furnace which is used to heat the melting uh, material is heated in a crucible furnace from room temperature to 100 degrees centigrade above its melting point for casting the alloy density is 7.5 grams per centimeter cube and the melting point is 800 degrees centigrade and its specific heat is 0.33 joules per gram degree centigrade in the solid state whereas in the liquid state it is slightly lower that is 0.29 and heat of fusion is 160 joules per gram so it asks how much heat energy must be added to accomplish the heating assuming no losses so here we have as we know our expression that was equals to rho v into solid state tm minus t naught plus hf plus cl that is tp minus tm and our expression so it says <coughs> it says we have the density of 7.5 gram per centimeter cube so we can write 7.5 10 exponent 6 into uh, and it's 1 cubic meter so you can write the volume as 1 okay because it's 1 cubic meter of uh, uh, material so this all together multiplies into uh, cs we have cs as a uh, specific heat in the solid state that is equal to 0 0.33 0 0.33 into tm minus t naught what is the melting point here the melting point is 800 degrees centigrade so we have melting point of 800 degrees centigrade and the ambient temperature let's take ambient temperature to be 25 plus we have the heat of fusion as 160 plus we have 0 0.29 of the specific heat in the liquid state into tp minus tm we have tm as 800 and what is tp it says tp is 100 degrees centigrade above its melting point the pouring temperature is 100 degrees centigrade above the melting point so we can simply write 900 here is it okay so you can just calculate this value and we will have the value of 3335 exponent 6 joules so this is the total heat that is to be supplied for achieving a temperature pouring temperature of 100 degrees centigrade above the melting point now second step that is used in the casting process that is pouring now we have the molten material and now and we have to pour it into the mold cavity so there are some factors involved in the pouring as well <coughs> now once we have the molten material the second step for the casting is pouring 
and this is also one of the critical step because uh, if we don't pour the material properly it might damage the mold it might uh, cause some defects in our final product there are certain factors that govern the pouring process the first one is the pouring temperature and we have just calculated the pouring temperature in the last slide and it is the temperature at which molten metal is introduced into the mold cavity second one that is the pouring rate what is pouring rate the volumetric rate at which a molten metal is poured into the mold cavity how it is important because if it is too excessive if the molten rate is too excessive it might cause turbulence and this turbulence can cause some problems and I will tell you why if it is too slow the material might freeze or uh, solidify before completely filling the mold cavity why turbulence should be avoided because turbulence accelerates the formation of metallic oxide and these metallic oxides are brittle in nature and because of the brittleness they can act like a, they can act like a stress raises in the whole material so this metallic oxide should be avoided by avoiding the turbulence during the pouring there are some other factors as well that contribute to the avoidance of the turbulence that is because of the turbulence there can be mold erosion mold erosion means because of the movement of uh, liquid over the mold cavity it might wear the mold surface because of the impact of flowing metal molten metal are dense and highly reactive so they cause high rate of erosion especially turbulence so if we have a molten metal and it is also in turbulent regime it will erode the surface of the mold cavity much faster compared to the other materials so let's have some engineering analysis of the pouring so an important relationship that governs the flow of liquid metal in through the gating system and into the mold cavity is Bernoulli theorem which states that the sum of energy that is head pressure kinetic and the friction at any two points in a flowing liquid are equal let's suppose uh, this is our basic scheme for the sand casting and this is our gearing system or the down screw we take this as point 1 and this one as point 2 so according to Bernoulli theorem the head plus the pressure plus the kinetic energy and the friction loss at point one should be equals to head plus atmospheric pressure uh, plus pressure plus kinetic energy and the friction losses at point two uh, they should be equal on both side so although there is a friction that exists in this flowing liquid in this flowing metal in the mold cavity but for, sim for the sake of simplification just as uh, ignore the friction effects and we assume that the liquid is under the constant atmospheric pressure so we can just ignore cancel out this pressure as well so whatever we are left with is H1 plus V1 square divided by 2 G equals to H2 plus V2 square divided by 2 G. So as you can see here, this at this point the head is maximum and at this point head is zero, practically zero while the velocity at this initial point would be zero while the velocity at this uh, point would be maximum so head at point two is zero while the velocity at point one is zero so we have h1 equals to v2 square divided by 2g so from here So from this expression it can be solved for the flow velocity that is
vt square 2h1 2h1g of v under 2gh where v is the velocity at the bottom of this group where is h is the height of the screw and g is acceleration due to gravity there's another relationship that can be used and it is important uh, during pouring that uh, other important relationship is the continuity law which states that the vol volumetric flow rate remain constant throughout the liquid so it can be expressed as q equals to v1 a1 at any point equals to v2 a2 at any two point so let's suppose we have the as we know the down screw is like this one right then we have a riser and we have the mold cavity like this and we have the runner and the mold cavity like this so we have the down screw in tapered form and the reason is this continuity law because we need to maintain the constant volumetric flow rate so as the velocity increases when the metal molten metal moves downwards area construction area is reduced to maintain the volumetric flow rate so that is the reason this down screw is in the tapered form so here you can write uh, let's let me change here you can write q is e is the volumetric flow rate where is uh, it can be the unit is centimeter cube per second then we have v equals to velocity during the flow and this a is the cross sectional area now runner from the base uh, from the screw base to the mold cavity is horizontal hence head h is same as it is at the screw base the q that is the volumetric flow rate through the gate the mold cavity remains equal to va at the base so the time required to fill the mold cavity will be that is tmf that the time required to fill the mold cavity will be equals to the volume of the mold cavity this is equals to the volume of the mold cavity and divide by the volumetric flow rate and that is because the analysis ignores the friction losses and some other constriction uh, there are certain factors that we are ignoring in our calculation that is the friction losses and the change in the behavior of the material uh, when the temperature increases like the specific heat of the material changes when it is at very high temperature and the change in the behavior in the liquid and the solid state so these are the idealized condition obviously there is a test or there is a uh, you can say characteristic that is called a fluidity what is fluidity the molten metal flow characteristics are often described by the term fluidity it is a measure of capability of a metal to flow into the to flow into and fill the mold cavity before freezing so we uh, check uh, the
flowing capability of the material of the metal so we can determine uh, when it will freeze before the uh, before filling the mold cavity it is inverse of the viscosity hence if viscosity increases fluidity decreases obviously uh, fluidity is the measuring of the flow and viscosity is something which opposes the flow right viscosity is something which opposes the flow so the fluidity is uh, when the viscosity increases the fluidity decreases so the standard method to test the fluidity is a spiral mold test as shown below we have a pouring curve with the down screw and the spiral mold and we simply pour the molten material into the mold cavity and and we check out uh, how long it will flow before freezing so fluidity is indicated by the length of the solidified metal in the spiral channel so uh, how long it will take to flow uh, and how much length will it cover before completely freezing so longer cast spiral means greater fluidity if it is covering greater distance in this spiral mold it means it has greater fluidity if it is not covering the greater distance in this spiral mold it means it has less fluidity and the material is more viscous so there are certain factors that affect the fluidity such as pouring temperature if the pouring temperature is high obviously the fluidity will be high viscosity is a material has a is a viscous material it will have the less fluidity the metal composition either it's a pure metal or it's an alloy so it also affects the fluidity the flow of the material and the heat transfer to the surrounding how much uh, heat transfer so if we have the poor mold poor mold is something which has the greater heat transfer coefficient of which which allows the heat transfer uh, rapidly so then the material will ultimately have the less fluidity in that specific system now let's solve this example uh, it says a mold screw that is 20 cm long and the cross sectional area at its base is 2.5 cm square the screw feeds a horizontal runner leading into a mold cavity so we can uh, if we can draw it here we have a mold screw we might have some riser here we have the mold screw that is approximately 20 centimeter long and the cross sectional area at its base is 2.5 centimeter square and the mold cavity the volume for this mold cavity it is equals to 1560 centimeter cube <coughs> now it says determine a velocity velocity of the molten metal at the base of the screw and also volumetric flow rate and time required to fill the mold so what uh, what uh, was the expression for the velocity of the molten metal at the base of the screw that was v equals to under root 2 g h we have v equals to under root 2 into 9.8 into the height of the screw that is 20 that would be equals to 198.1 centimeter per second oh, Uh, so v equals to under root 2 into 981 centimeter per second square into h that is 20 centimeter so we will have 198.1 centimeter per second this is the velocity for the molten material 
Now, second expression it asks determine the volumetric flow rate. What was the volumetric flow rate that was Q equals to A into V? So we have A as 2.5 centimeter square and V was which we have just calculated 198.1 centimeter per second. So that would be equals to 495 centimeter square per second that is our volumetric fluid third one it asks time required to fill the board that is the time t m f that was v by q it is simply equals to the that is the volume of the mole cavity and the volumetric flow rate so that is equals to 1560 divided by 495 so it equals to around 3.2 seconds now we have discussed the first step that was the heating and we saw that we need to heat the material beyond the melting point so that we can pour into the molten material then we discussed the pouring that there are three important factors the first one the pouring temperature the pouring rate and the turbulence and we discussed and we performed some engineering analysis of the pouring in our casting technology now once the material is poured and it has completely filled the mold cavity the next step is the solidification after pouring the material into the mold cavity the molten metal cools and solidifies so in this section we will examine the physical mechanism of solidification that occurs during the casting process so it might include the solidification time that's shrinkage mechanisms and directional solidification and some riser designs so we can have two kinds of the material in the casting process either we are performing the casting of the pure metal or we are performing the casting of the uh, metallic alloys or the alloys simply so in case of the pure material as we know pure material solidifies and melts at a constant temperature which is represented in this curve so let's suppose we have a time temperature graph and we are start we have started to heat the material until it achieves enough temperature uh, it reaches the melting point that is one is we have the melting point here then we have some heat of fusion then we will again heat it up to the pouring temperature that is tp we have calculated earlier so in this case we have a local solidification time that suppose what is allowed to cool down so uh, the its freezing point or you can say its melting point and uh, the point where it starts to solidify until the solidification is complete that is called as a local solidification time then we have a total solidification time that is uh, from the pouring temperature once we allow it to cool down until the complete solidification at the melting point that is termed as a total solidification time but unlike the pure material the alloys freeze over the range of temperature because alloy as you know alloy is a mixture of material we have a uh, uh, alloys are basically mixture of material with the base material as a metal one material must be a metal the other can be metal or non-metal so this is called an alloy <clears throat> and we call it mixture because each material retain its original property in the alloy unlike the compound materials so alloy freezes over the range of temperature rather than at a single point the exact range depends upon alloy system and composition so let's suppose we have a alloy system of nickel and copper so we can draw it like this one we have an alloy system of nickel and copper Let's suppose at this point we have at this point we have pure nickel and at this point we have pure copper 
at this point we have pure nipple and this point and we have a temperature melting temperature of nickel to be equals to 1455 degrees centigrade and the temperature of melting for nickel is 1455 degrees centigrade and temperature of melting for the pure copper is that that is 1083 degree centigrade and this is a line where we have 50% of nickel and 50% of copper so as you move here we have let's suppose if you write it zero here it means you have zero percent copper and hundred percent nickel if you write it here we have 10 percent copper and 90 percent nickel if we have write 20 we have 20 percent copper and 80 percent nickel if 30 40 50 and so on so forth we have 100 100 percent copper here so once we we have 100 percent nickel here once we start to add the copper into it its melting point reduces its melting point starts to reduce if we keep on adding the copper into it melting point will keep on reducing until we have 100 percent of the copper so it will reach the temperature of 1083 and same is the case for the solidification This is how we got uh, two equilibrium lines. The first one is called as the solidus. This one is called as a solidus, and this one is called as the liquidus because after this, there's a complete liquid state, and before this one, there's a complete solid state. So we can see, let's suppose if we have a nickel and copper alloy such that it has, I have an alloy such that it has, let's suppose 30% copper and 70% nickel, right? So if we have 30% copper, we have 100% copper here. 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30. So we have 30% copper here and 70% nickel. And it is at the temperature of, let's suppose, 1500 degrees centigrade. It is at the temperature of 1500 degrees centigrade. So it lies somewhere here. Okay. And now if I start to cool it down, if we start to cool it down, once it touches the liquidus line, there will be a beginning of solidification in the structure, <coughs> right? And we know the solidifying temperature, or the in other words, the melting temperature of copper is very low. That is, uh, one zero eight three degrees centigrade, right? While the solidifying temperature or the melting temperature of nickel is very near that is 1455 degrees centigrade so which material starts to solidify in this whole alloy system which material starts to solidify obviously in this alloy nickel will start to solidify first so there will be solidification of nickel let's suppose if i have a container containing can have in this alloy having this alloy so there will be a formation nickel will start to solidify like this and as soon as I move downwards uh, called, called the solidification of copper will also begin so we will have some mixture of nickel and copper nickel and copper like this and we will discuss this uh, in detail how the solidification of alloy occurs how it works right so uh, if we draw this time temperature curve for an alloy just erasing this one 
if you draw this time temperature curve for the alloy material it won't have any local solidification time it will have only so So it won't have any local solidification time instead it will have only the total solidification time so we have here let's suppose the pouring temperature so we will cool it down to somewhere its freezing point is here uh, the beginning of the freezing So it will freeze, starts to freeze in this way. Then there will be a range of temperature on which the freezing will continue. There will be a range of temperature on which freezing will continue. Unlike this one, it has a straight line, but we will have a range of temperature on which freezing will continue. Then we have complete freezing. So instead of this one, we will have the total solidification time that is from the pouring temperature to this uh, complete solidification right this one is complete solidification time this one is a pouring temperature there is a reduction in temperature this one is a beginning of freezing this one is a beginning of freezing and then we have so on and so forth like this one uh, for this clarity you can check out the figure number 10.6 of your book check out figure 10.6 in your course book you will have some clarity so that's all for this lecture in the next lecture we will see them how microscopically or how the microstructure of a pure material and alloy forms during the solidification of the molten material and as I told you before we will discuss what those dendritic structure are or what the code structure is which we uh, read as a disadvantage of the casting process so this solidification will help us to understand how come this become one of the disadvantage of the casting process that's all for this lecture should you have any question you may reach me at the google classroom assalamu alaikum